Welcome to the Nifty Show. I am Sir Lord Jill Calm. Today we are going to bring you the literary wonders of NFTs. As Travis and I have talked about for some time, there is so many different ways to bring utility in the NFT space. The Web3 world is amazing, connecting uh, experiences and people and communities with NFTs, metaverses, games. There's so much going on. And it was about a year ago that I encountered a project called Jenkins the Valet. Thought, oh, what is this all about? Well, they had something called the Writer's Room. And the Writer's Room was something that owning a pass to the Writer's Room would give members the opportunity to collaborate with the parent company Tally Labs and storytellers to write literary wonders. And I have with me the two semi doxed founders of the project at Tally Labs, Safa and Valet Jones. Gentlemen, welcome to the Nifty Show. Thanks for having us. We're excited. Thank right. you so much. So Safa, you're the uh, the board ape over there. What number is that? Ooh, uh, 7362, I believe. Okay. And Valet, what is that? What's your character there that we're looking at? That is a gutter clone. Uh, I think you can probably pick one up for an incredibly small amount of ETH. Out of the gutter, right? That's Straight it. out of the gutter. <laughs> Here's the <laughs> thing. V- Valet Jones got, got the short end of the stick in this in this situation because he was the original purchaser of Ape 1798, who would later become Jenkins Valet. And uh-huh. as it became clear that we were going to build something, he so graciously made that uh, property of the company. So uh, he... He has an ape as well, but he's sporting a, a gutter clone. Nice. So Jenkins of LA is a, a ape inspired derivative project. Um, you guys are what co-founders at Tally Labs? Is that right? Yeah, we are. Uh, so tallylabs.xyz is the website, and um, you guys are building characters, tools, and worlds to make the metaverse a better place. So it started with this Jenkins yacht valet what what was the idea here when you guys got together and thought let's launch this thing what was the intent yeah safa and i are childhood best friends so we we didn't even get together you know back in may of 2021 and think about this kind of stuff we we've been doing things together since i don't know for 20 years or so um in the, you know, and you all have, have been in the space for so long, but a lot of people would say that, that, you know, the early days of the NFT space were late 2020, early 2021. Um, and at the time, people were starting to use NFT avatars as their profile pictures online. Uh, early days, it was CryptoPunks, but especially, you know, when Bored Apes came out in late April of 2021, we started to see this explosion of NFT avatars. Um, at the time, a lot of people would just, it would just be like you with your name, but with a board ape NFT as your profile picture. Um, we also noticed because BAYC was giving the commercial rights to each of the holders that folks were starting to, uh, monetize their characters in one way or another, they would either, you know, put them on t-shirts or put them on wine or do things like that. And Saf and I looked at each other and we thought to ourselves that board ape NFTs, looked like they could be their own characters. They looked like they had their own story to tell. And the idea that we had the commercial rights to an NFT that we purchased made us believe that we could create a character of our own. Um, We searched the secondary market. We found Ape1798, who you can see sort of, you can see a rendering of, 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 you know, uh, inspiration from that board ape on your screen right now. But but Ape1798, the, the board ape, uh, has a work vest and he's got an Irish boho hat and he looks like he would be the valet at the club if you showed up to the board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, and so the two of us thought right then and there, you know, like, why don't we just start writing as this character like today? So uh, I saw this NFT on the um, on um, OpenSea in September of 2021 and having understanding of what membership cards meant in the NFT space, because we had done the nifty box a year earlier. I thought this is really cool. I don't know what these guys are doing with it, but I love books and I love NFTs and this is going to be, so I bought one of these 
and and I've had this thing and and really I'm going to be candid for the very first time I just now logged in to the writer's room because I don't even know what I've got here uh, but apparently I have a valet ticket with five voting power that's not licensed what, what does that mean yeah so there's uh there's tiers of writer's room nfts right you have valet tickets you have yacht keys you have valet stands which is you know homage to where jenkins spends most of his days uh although i guess now he's uh you know traversing the jungles of azurbala um and then you have wag me yachts which are which are the highest tier uh each tier comes with different voting power as well as different licensing opportunities uh so in the writer's room which you see here is our home for community generative work so uh, work uh, votes were cast on various questions and, and outcomes that would would define how Bored and Dangerous is written. Uh, obviously, pursuant to your voting power, as well as uh, as well as licensing. So all of that happened in the writers' room using uh, logging in using the NFT that you just did. Uh, and what you add so here these, is, yeah, these the, are all these apes featured. right here that I'm looking at the cast. These are all holders of of apes or mutant apes um, that also hold a valet pass. And they are in the community and perhaps part of the collaborative effort of uh, writing. What's, what does it mean that they're listed here? Yeah, not all of them necessarily have writer's room NFTs, but all of them either have their own Jenkins Valet writer's room NFTs or they partnered with someone who does. So uh, the, the valet ticket that you showed that you have had since September that got you into the gated writer's room basically gives you the ability to participate in setting the creative direction of the stories that we tell. The first story that we told um, is Jenkins' biggest tale yet. Jenkins, you know, from May until August of last year, 2021, really became known on social media as telling the stories of all of the odd jobs that he has done at the, as the head valet at the Board Ape Yacht Club. And then in August of last year, Jenkins said, I'm going to tell my biggest story yet and I need your help. And I'm launching a gated writer's room where you can join me to help set the creative direction and help me tell that story. And so, so yeah, yeah, sorry. So is that what this book then is, Bored and Dangerous? Because this, I believe, is the first work to come out of the the DAO. That's correct. Yeah. So one, one thing to know, Joel, is, is it's uh, it is not a DAO. Um, it, it is sort of has DAO like governance, right? It, we, we, the community fully decided everything that, that went into the book, um, but it's not a formal DAO yet. It's uh, right now so we're a private company uh, working with our holders to create awesome content. Um, but yeah, Bored and Dangerous is what we think sort of the first example of community generative content in the NFT space. So 3,000 holders voted on everything that you'll read in the book, and then 4,075 apes and mutants licensed to appear in the book. Okay, so I, because I'm a holder, I got the opportunity to mint uh, one of these, and I think I purchased another one, um, and, and I'm not exactly sure what I've got here. All I know is it says I've got a bored and dangerous money train, and then I've got another bored and dangerous great ape society. So is this actually a book here that I can read, or is this an NFT that I can redeem for a book? What do I do with this? Yeah, you uh, you cannot read it natively on OpenSea. Um, okay. We, you know, because this book is, is is novel, we wanted to bring it to life in like a really special way. So uh, our team, our awesome team of of uh, on the product and engineering side, has built sort of a custom token gated e reader. So you will take that book NFT to another website, use it to log in, and then be able to read the book in a bit more of an immersive way. Inter uh, see the characters that are mentioned, sort by characters, bookmark your spot, etc. Um, we felt that just like swiping through OpenSea to reading pages was was not necessarily the, the best use. Um, so that'll be going live um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's fully you know built in house. It's how you'll read the book. Um, that's sort of the consumption side of it. Uh, and what I think you you know the alpha that you're really here for is is uh, where the book can take you. One of the benefits of bringing it to market as an NFT is just the fun mechanics that you can introduce. Um, so there's a burning, uh, there's a staking side of this sort of decision tree. Um, uh, I can speak about one, VJ can speak about the other. We, we usually just flip flop or alternate. Um, uh, Azerbala is on the burn side. Uh, it's, you know, we mentioned it earlier to you before, before we started speaking. Uh, it is uh, the first PFP collection that, that we as a company are bringing to market. Um, and we're really excited about it. We feel that um, 
we've put a level of, of storytelling and lore uh, and technology into it that that most other projects haven't. You were able to check out the website and, and, and see everything that went into it here. Um, there's dueling factions. Um, we uh, we just had literally just got off of community spaces with, about Azerbala. Um, there's been a number of characters that have been created by members of the community already before the PFPs have even launched. Um, so we're really excited. And what you see here is the world. So uh, if you click on one of those spots, you'll see all of the different factions that you can go visit. Uh, the Edocon, which you, you've selected, is the corrupt prison guard who wants to you know, cleanse the city of crime. Um, you can click on hotspots and, and read about it. So we've, we've embedded a, a ton of, of lore about this world uh, into it. Uh, we've, we worked with a really awesome screenwriter um, who's now our head of story. To, to so help. this is a, a metaverse then that people will be able to walk around in is uh, what happens here i see that there's story but what happens inside azerbala it's a game yeah. we're we're so we're storytellers first and foremost um azerbala is not a game or an interoperable metaverse today um surely you know as time goes on and as our community does more in and around azerbala maybe you know we will be inspired to go in that direction but but for us and at tally labs our focus is on creating content that starts in web3 and then um, expands out of it you can think of bored and dangerous by jenkins of la as the first example of that where all of the creative was sourced by um, nft holders and by our community the book came to market as an nft but ultimately, our ambition is to have that like on shelves at Barnes and Noble and on Amazon and things like that. Azerbala is is really like the the sort of the next step in the iteration of like content that is created in Web three. So our community will own the inhabitants. They are creating characters out of their own Azurians. We've created a setting. We've created lore. They will tell their own stories. Um, and we're building a ton um, of software experiences to help them build their own stories and tell their own stories. All the while, we have our own team internally and we'll work with partners um, to tell the official story of Azerbala that builds upon all of the amazing creative that our community, um, you know, thinks to do with their own characters. So this um, this fictional world can then become the um, the foundation for just volumes of totally. stories, uh, which of course can turn into television, film, comic books. Uh, I, you know, I know those who are book people, uh, yeah. some of them feel opposed to comic, you know, uh, graphic visualizations because they're purists. But look, when you've got IP that uh, is successful, a whole new range of NFT characters could also rise out of this. That's that's totally right. I mean, we think that like the franchises of the future will start on the Internet, that this is the way that they will start. And we hope to prove that with Azerbala. I love it. So what uh, what do I do with these books, the bored and dangerous books? And what is the difference between a great ape society book and a money train book? Um, one thing that we did not discuss, uh, which to, to paint sort of the complete picture is, is the other side of the decision tree, which is, which is staking. So okay. we, we mentioned what happens when you burn the book, you can, you can get a PFP in Azerbala, start to sort of interact within that universe and the rest of the holders and, and be a part of that. Um, if you stake, uh, you can earn membership in, in a DAO, um, which I know you mentioned earlier that we've, uh, are bringing to market alongside of our community. And that, that is called Hawthorne. Um, and it's named after a tree that uh, is known to be able to weather uh, any type of condition and, and storms and all that. Uh, we think, you know, incubating a DAO is really challenging. But once it's up and running, uh, we hope that it has that level of sort of durability. Um, and Hawthorne is really a way for us and our community to deepen the, the relationship that we currently have. As we mentioned with the writer's room and Jenkins right now, we're sort of a private company creating content alongside bringing our holders along for the ride. Hawthorne is a way for, for us and our community to work together on a deeper level, um, share ownership and share governance over, over IP, you know, with this entity. Um, so to an extent, uh, Hawthorne is pretty open-ended in terms of what can come out from it or can come from it. Um, Tally Labs will have a number of projects that we'll be proposing to the DAO that we work on together. Um, there will be members of the DAO who have their own idea for projects that they'll surface. Uh, and we'd love to be selected as a group that can build it out with them. Um, but ultimately, keeping it truly decentralized is what's most important to us. And sort of the impetus for it is, is we believe that um, that group of people from all over the world who don't know each other, 
uh, know nothing about one another aside from the common belief that they have um, can can make amazing IP uh, mm-hmm. and, and that, that franchises will start on the Internet. So um, that is Hawthorne. So I just wanted to give you that context. Love it. I'm sure both of you guys are big book readers. Uh, you don't start a project like this unless uh, you love to read. So I'm going to ask you what your desert island book is. Safa, you go first. You only got one. You're on a desert island. You got to read it again and again and again and again. It's all you got. What's so you'd think, you'd think that with the amount of time this question comes up and how, how much I pale in comparison to VJ with like my book knowledge, you'd think that I would just start reading more because that would be the logical thing to do. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not an avid reader. I, I want to be really honest with you. V, VJ is a far more avid reader, far more qualified. That being said, um, Ender's Game is my favorite book, uh, okay. and it's, it's a it's, great answer. It's phenomenal. So it's a great, great book. Movie up or down? Uh, I think the book's way better. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. happens most of the time. When when we say that we're book people, uh, sort of, I, I'm book and Safa is people. Uh, so you Got get it. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, well, Valet, since you're the book person, you get three books on your desert island. Oh, what that's awesome. See, yeah, you, you get... normally have a hard time picking. Um, yeah. Besides I take, it, I take it that's one for sure. I take it that you're a book person, Joel? Uh, you know, I used to be more of a book person. And okay. honestly, with the internet and so much information and other stimulation, all these streaming services, I read a lot less today than ever before. And Me I'm okay too. with it. I'm I get that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm honestly. I mean, I'm like a tally labs person now. Like, <laughs> like that's what I do. So, uh, but let's see. Uh, my uh, best book I've ever read, straight up for sure, uh, and that I would bring with me is The Razor's Edge by Somerset Mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, first book I ever read where where Somerset Mom, the author, not only writes himself in as a character, but actually just like in the most pivotal chapter addresses the reader like ahead of time and just tells the reader like i wouldn't have written this book if it wasn't for this chapter so like you should pay attention uh which i think is just like incredibly and just an incredibly awesome thing and let let Uh, me pause you there that also that was made into a film with bill murray back in the 80s right and i believe i haven't seen the film actually i believe it's known though that the book is is considerably better usually Um, they are (laughs) for sure i would i would take um, I would take any of the Harry Potters. Uh, you know, I don't know if you haven't read them, I would take number one. <laughs> if if you have, I probably would take like the longest. What would that be? Probably like uh, the fourth or the fifth book. Harry uh, Potter because... and the never ending um, revenue stream for JK Rowling. I think that's what that's called. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just uh, it, probably the, I, you know, in my opinion, the greatest world ever built and, and um, uh, truly like inspiring. And then number Number three, which is my number one, would be Bored and Dangerous. Oh, Absolutely. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So I guess I need my laptop too, so I can connect it to yeah. Tally Labs' custom e reader. Very wise. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, what is the best way for people to get into the community so they can see more of what you got going on and be a part of this? Ooh, uh, Twitter or Discord, uh, most likely. So you could follow us on Twitter at Jenkins the Valet, um, at Tally Labs NFT. Uh, is where we'll put a lot of stuff out. Myself and, and Valet Jones also do a fair bit of tweeting, as does the majority of our team. Um, so any of our, if you go, to, if you go to the main accounts, you'll 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 land on our individual ones. Um, uh, Azerbala and Jenkins Valet both have discords with really awesome, welcoming, vibrant communities where we discuss all things about the project. And our whole team is in there every day, talking to the community, hearing what they have to say, and, and making sure that we're we're building for them. So. Uh, those would be the best places. Obviously, JenkinsValet.com, Azerbala.com, TallyLabs.xyz. Uh, you know, the one thing I didn't mention here, and I and I saw it straight off the top, is that Bored and Dangerous, um, the final work, was created by Neil Strauss, who is um, a New York Times bestselling author multiple times over. Uh, if you've ever read the game, which I think he since uh, redacted as he grew up and realized maybe this isn't the best way to uh, to meet women of substance, but uh, his works have been read by millions of people. So how did, how did he on board to the project? Wow. Um, the, 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 first of all, I mean, Neil is just like an incredible person and, and obviously a phenomenal writer. He's been in the space for a long time. He's, he's, he's been writing in the space and he's been sort of crypto native, I think as early as 2015. Um, we were introduced to Neil by one of our advisors uh, G Money, 
uh, G Money and Neil know each other. Uh, G knew that we were looking for a writer to help tell Jenkins's biggest story yet. And, and it was the type of project that excited Neil. A fun fact about Neil is, is um, since the game, he's really written um, like a number of celebrity memoirs. He, he wrote um, recently Kevin Hart, uh, Joe Jonas, Marilyn Manson. Um, and he interviewed us as Jenkins the Valet extensively and did a number of interviews with community members uh, in, in character uh, to learn more about it. And he really dug into the questions that we asked the community members in our portal and treated it like he was getting to know these characters uh, at our, at our, we did an, in, in real life event at NFT NYC and Neil came and Neil met some of the characters that, that are written in the book as main characters and like freaked out, you know, he, he was repeating back to them, like what they had built their characters around. So he really got into character on it. And it was just a pleasure getting to work with him on this. Well, perhaps one day he will write the story of uh, Jenkins yacht valet. Anything's possible, right? Asafa uh, VJ. Thanks for coming on today and sharing with us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you awesome. so much. You throw there us you off. go gang practical applications and utility for nfts these guys have been at it for over a year now watch everything that tally labs is doing tally labs.xyz and of course you can go on OpenSea and look up the jenkins the valet and board and dangerous nfts make sure you are always visiting the authentic collections don't be scammed by the scammers because that's what scammers do uh, make sure that you do subscribe review ring bells tell a friend and NFTs are the future and the utility is going to keep rolling. So we will catch you on the next episode of the Nifty Show. Until then, keep it nifty. Looking into the future, what do we see? It's lined with digital collectibles. We call them NFTs. Games, trading cards, digital art, and those crypto kitties. Joel and Zach are the hosts you'll know. Joel and Zach say this will blow. The Lord is already set, go! It's the Nifty, really kind of spiffy, the Nifty Show.